Alright, let's start creating the visual elements of the game page. So I'm going to replace the existing label with another label that has the X name attribute and that's the question label. And the X in this attribute, as we've discussed before, is an identifier that was declared in the content page tag. The second element will be an entry and that's a control that allows us to input text the equivalent to the input tag in HTML and the X name for this one is answer. Then we'll have a button that will submit the answer. The name of the button is submit answer and when clicked this button will call an on answer submitted method. Then we'll have another label that will have a message informing the user if the answer is correct. And the final element for now will be another label and that's the game over label. And this is a label that will trigger when the game is finished, so after the set amount of questions is answered. So now we'll generate the logic that will create the questions and for that we're going to use a private void method to create new question. And this is the method that will be created for all types of games. So we need to change the question according to the game. Each game needs to have a different operation symbol. So for this, we're going to use a switch statement. So I created a variable called game operand, and I know this is not the correct term. I'm going to change that later, but I'm using the newest switch statement notation. And basically what this means is that the value that's being assigned to this variable depends on the game type property. So based on the game type string, I'm assigning different operation symbols. And the last case is an underline, and that's the default which covers anything that's not one of the previous cases. And it's not mandatory, but I'll keep it there just for teaching purposes. But the next step is to create a random variable using .NET random type. And then I need to create two more fields for this class. And those will be the first and second number integers that I'll initialize with a value of zero. Then I'm going to assign each of these variables with a random number. And I'm using a ternary expression for this assignment. And this is nothing more than a short way to write an if-else statement. So, for example, with the first number, I'm saying the first number equals. Then I'm checking if the game type is a division. So what's in the left of the question mark is the Boolean expression that I'm evaluating. If that expression is true, what's on the right side of the question mark gets assigned. And if it's not, what's in the right side of the colon gets assigned. So if this game is not a division, I'm generating a random number from 1 to 9. If the game is a division, I'm generating a random number from 1 to 99. And the reason for this is because I don't want to generate a division game with numbers from 1 to 9. It would be a very limited game, considering I only want to generate division equations where the result is a whole number. But above these expressions, I'm going to write the if-else expression that we would use instead of a ternary operator. So if you haven't used ternary expressions before, you can see what it does by comparison with an if-else statement. And as you can see, to write a ternary expression, I use one line. And to write an if-else statement that does the same thing, I use seven lines. So it's definitely worth learning about ternary expressions to make your code cleaner. But I'm going to delete this code and keep just the ternary expressions. But now I'm going to bring in some logic specific to the division game. As I said before, I want the result of the operations to be whole numbers and also positive numbers. So I'm creating two conditions in a while loop. I'm checking if the first number is smaller than the second number and if the first number divided by the second number results in a number with decimals. And I'm using the conditional operator OR, which is the double vertical slash. That means that if either of these conditions is true, the code block inside the loop runs again and the execution will only exit the loop once these two conditions are not met. Now we've covered this in detail in our console application so I'm going to point you to that video in the show notes below but of course always feel free to reach out and ask questions. And now we have all the elements of our question the first number, the second number and the operation symbol. So now we can assign the text in the question label using string interpolation where we are combining the three elements. So for that we're using the dollar sign and the variables in curly brackets. And one final step for now will be to create a new question calling the method in the constructor for the game page. And since I declare this method in the XAML file, I also need to create the on answer submitted. It's just going to be an empty method for now, otherwise I'll get an error. So if we test the app and click on addition, 
we can see the question, the field and the button. But it doesn't look very good. And even though we're gonna fully style this application in the end of this tutorial to make it look beautiful, let's just improve it a little bit. I can't quite tolerate how bad it looks at the moment. So let's start by adding some padding to the stack layout. That's gonna be 200 and also some spacing between the elements, which will be 25. Let's set the question's font size to 32. And now it looks a little bit better. So let's test all the operations. I can see the multiplication. I can also see the division. And we had also seen the subtraction and addition. So everything works. Now at this stage, I can only generate one question. So in the next chapter, we will create logic for a complete game with all the questions and the game over message and also the ability to submit answers.